Hello, everyone. Bell at the ready. Computer at the ready. Chat GPT at the ready. Don't worry, this isn't scripted yet. I'll have to wait for my AI actor to come in. Until then, no, it is me. Mid journey. The ready. Let me choke it. Would be live soon. All would be revealed. 10 seconds. Whoop, that's not true. 15. Whoops. All right. Okay. Five seconds. Get that prep sandwich ready. Hello, everyone. It's Thursday. We're almost at the end of the week. But I have a super exciting episode, which I can't wait to get into. And without further ado, no scripts, no chat GPT around just yet. This is unscripted. This is live. And I have the fantastic Natalie, the founder and director of Name Architecture. How are you today, Natalie? Great, great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. We met briefly last year at the London Build Expo, where we talked a little bit about what name architecture does. But we also have a little bit of a topic today, which I find really interesting because you're, you are a practicing architect. You are a director of this kick-ass architecture practice, and you've been experimenting with AI, and I can't wait to hear about it all. But just before we go into AI, for anyone that's not met you before, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and name? Great, yeah. So um, uh, the practice is called uh, Name Architecture. I'm Natalie Rosenzweig, the founder and director of the practice. We uh, we work from offices in Paris and London. Although today uh, the biggest team is in uh, is uh, in Paris, and that's where I'm talking to you from today. Um, I set Name up about uh, five years ago after um, a twelve year uh, partnership. And we've actually quickly grown into a, a great team of uh, like-minded people uh, who enjoy the variety of projects that we do in the in the office. We have projects in many different cultures, in ma many different scales, and uh, and uh, so it, it's really a, a kind of studio that shares this as a as a as both work, but also in a very uh, studio-like environment. Um, I think, but that what's important to say in the contents, uh, in the context of our talk today, is that one very important aspect for us is to seamless, seamlessly mix this production of the work that we do for clients with the larger questions that interest us, uh, and we we try to use every opportunity that we get to question something, to uh, advance our knowledge, and uh, and to highlight um, the conceptual thinking that goes behind it. So, um, in the context of our, our our discussion today, these are. Uh, very important and interesting questions that we're tackling in the in the office as a studio. Mm, very, very cool. Well, I brought up the link here and people can check out Name Architecture, but don't get too distracted with all that beautiful work because you can ask Natalie live questions as well. And Natalie has made this it's so super easy and interesting because I've got a series of questions that we thought we'd kind of talk about in the AI space as well, kind of themed around what we're gonna talk about. My goodness though, we've got so many hellos, but we're definitely live, Natalie, because oh, they're all coming in, which is quite nice. Um, perfect. So in what I'm curious about as well, is so as a practicing architect, you're the founder of the studio. So why are you interested in AI at the moment? So I, I think uh, it's obviously not something that we can uh, not uh, be interested in or not look at into because it's all around us and it's uh, it's affecting uh, all the industries around us. So it's it's actually something that we've started questioning a few years ago already when the first um, instances appeared in, in in the profession. And I guess our, our larger question is is uh, how is it going to affect uh, our profession as we know it today, which is also, yeah. I'll come back to that, not necessarily something that has always been uh, and, and our profession is constantly in, evolving. But uh, I'm, I'm interested mainly to question whether is this really a paradigm shift um, and and how uh, how to prepare ourselves for this or how best to work with it. Um, I think there are interesting questions that will come along uh, probably in the talk is how are we also actors of this change and not just, you know, something that isn't going to kind of uh, happen and fall on us and, and we're not prepared for this. Um, so that's, I guess, in a nutshell, um, 
why we're interested in it. I, I have to add to this that I'm interested in it both. I, I've I, I've taught for 12 years um, at the AA in London, and uh, we'll come back to that as well. But I, I think one of the interesting questions here is both how it's going to affect the profession, but also how does it affect what we teach the future uh, architects? And will architecture still be <laughs> taught the way we know it today? Uh, that, that Those are kind of inherent questions that come behind this. Very, very cool. And just to interject to this now, so before this podcast, this episode, because I was excited about it, I put out a question on LinkedIn where I said, how does everyone feel about the rise of AI, chat GPT, mid-journey, being used within the architecture industry? And it was quite interesting. So 283 people voted, 39% of people said they're very optimistic, 36% said they're cautiously optimistic, and it was 15% of people slightly concerned and 10% deeply concerned. Yeah. So I'm, I was encouraged by that, you know, because, actually, yeah, because yeah, it, can, it can go either way. But like we touched upon it a little bit, Natalie, before this episode as well, where, you know, we're no one, we're not saying it because it's early technology yet. We're an AA expert or any of like that. But it is interesting seeing how those things feed into it. But there's a question that you um, proposed as well about um, what can this be compared to in the history yeah. of architecture? Yeah. So where where can our AI be compared to in the history of architecture, in your opinion? So I, I, I don't have a clear answer to that yet. We're, we're questioning that. But I think... Um, the word architect uh, or architecture is an old world of, a word, obviously, that comes from ancient yeah. Greek. But the profession as we know it today is relatively recent. I think, you know, up, up to the Renaissance, for example, when the first uses of the word um, uh, architecture as a, as, as a title to what we're doing is uh, appears. Before that, there was uh, it, it was the creation or the, the, the imagination of these uh, the buildings came either from uh, an, the artist or the or the the uh, some kind of creative thought behind it and then it was ve very much uh, implemented by the person who knew how to build who was the masons and, and the carpenters that built structures it's in in the renaissance that we start seeing um this appear as as a, as a title, not even a profession yet, but as a title mm -hmm. and as as a certain number of rules that are are set in books and that people should follow, and it's then only actually much later uh, in the nineteenth century that we start seeing with the Beaux Arts school in in France and then this decline worldwide the the, the profession starting to really be taught as as such. Um, and I think that that's the first of all an inter an interesting thing to to um, bear in mind because what we deem as set in stone today as our profession of architects and how we how we practice it how we teach it is relatively recent in the history uh, of, of, of modern societies although buildings existed for <laughs> for all all the time so yeah. um, that's an in interesting aspect the other one is that I think it's always difficult to exactly explain what our, what the, the, the profession of an architect is, you know, is it yeah. the, the creatively thinking about uh, designs? Is it the drawing? Is it building? Is it the knowledge of uh, knowing how to build? Is it the knowledge of regulations? And, and it's all of this. Our, our profession is a generalist profession and it evolves and it has evolved uh, over time with, with new technologies, with new um, uh, building techniques, uh, drawing techniques, as, as we all know. Uh, the, what, I think what's interesting to question now is what, what shift are we seeing and what will happen uh, with the future of this profession? Uh, there are obviously AI is a great tool and we uh, that is also I think the direction that most architectural practices are using it for the moment yeah. as in it's a great tool for um, automating uh, tasks for uh, generating uh, creative ideas and having that as a basis of discussion. Uh, however, um, where it's going to, going to go and how much will it uh, will it take over uh, what what we're doing or what we're understanding an architect should be doing today is is a question. Mm, yeah, well, we're all kind of working it out as we go, aren't we? I'm just going to put a little bit of eye candy because I love your projects in the background. So, you. you know, if you've got these beautiful projects, we may as well show them, right? But like you say, I think it's um, 
and interest in space it is definitely a hot topic right now. I went to actually an exhibition last week um, by Hamza Sheikh where he, com he combined traditional architecture drawings with AI. So it was like that fusion. And I thought that was a really interesting space because it wasn't like a full-blown mid-journey AI drawing, but he took elements from it and kind of mixed old and new. Mm. And um, I thought that was quite interesting, Natalie. You know? I think there's a lot of things to to be said about it. I think, um, first of all, I, I, would, I would maybe make um, a slight... Uh, uh, give a slight explanation here or, or, or precision for our audiences, I think we could differentiate between AI as an automation. So anything yeah. that has to do with space planning, uh, the, 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 the kind of result, resolution at the level of massing of plants uh, that is already actually quite evolved in, in the industry. Um, and uh, what we've seen come coming up recently uh, is the the image production and, and the, the visual aspect of it with mid journey and, and and so on. I think, um, and in a sense, this novelty now is is something that everyone is obviously talking and testing about because it's also quite easy uh, to to test and it's open to yeah. to everyone. Therefore, there is a question. Of course, you don't need to be an architect to 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 design buildings on mid journey or to to creatively come up with uh, with ideas. Um, so, I think that it's important to make this, this distinction. Um, what's interesting here, if we if we talk about this, the aspect of the the, the pr visual production in architecture, as you said, is that it is very much based on what is already previously existing. So, um, and we've seen, I think, a great evolution over the last uh, month since Mid Journey made this big, big uh, break into the the social media of how uh, this is constantly evolving in terms of sty stylistically uh, images that are produced and and the actual quality of the, those images. So that, that it's really rapidly changing. I think if if you'll be listening to our post podcast in a month time, we've probably <laughs> we we yeah. will be talking about old stuff already. But um, I, I make this distinction because I think uh, it's an it, it's an important one about how uh, what is our role as architects uh, in in these processes. So. Um, I, I think that obviously the, the the automation side of it, where we where the AI is is an assistant to uh, to space planning, um, is uh, is is a tool that is has to be more controlled. Where variables, you know, the, the important elements in them are the the variables that you set, yeah, and that requires a certain level of uh, let's say uh, familiarity or knowledge with these. But it, it also has it, it, it poses questions of you know who uh, who inputs these variables is it you as an architect or how or uh, if I take examples of developers and clients that that the developer could actually get quite far into this process of in, of uh, coming up with a um, a massing for a future site uh, without before he actually contacts uh, you as an architect or the way with that our, the architecture profession is organized today. So I think uh, the, the questions that come on there is that what 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 is our role in there? What can we what yeah. do we contribute to to this um, to to this um, process? Uh, and yeah. I, I guess a lot of the people who are cautious about that it also ask the question of how many architects will still be needed to to uh, when when this automation process is very much um, improved. Um, yeah. so that, that's, I think, one aspect that we can talk about and, and question. Then there's obviously the, the, the second aspect, which I, I, I call maybe the aesthetic aspect of uh, the artificial intelligence, and it's the, 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 the creation of, of images. Um, what I, I find fascinating in, 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 in that uh, and, and to question is what, what the process to actually create these images are, because um, this is very much based on prompts today, as we know it. You know, you create Correct. the image because of the prompts that you, you you set in, and there's a whole kind of world and questions of what what are these uh, what are these prompts? What should they be? Uh, who who knows how to use the prop, prompts correctly? Um, does uh, do is it something that we should now learn or teach? <laughs> like to 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 describe? It's almost like the the verbal description of an image becomes more important. Uh, as an input than than anything else at this stage, and yeah. uh, 
uh, we, there, there's questions of language as well. I, I think I don't know if you've um, you've seen this. Uh, it was recently published this test in which we actually I'll talk about it in a second. We we that did this in the office too, but this test that was conducted about using the same prompt but in different languages and the the a uh, the, the image generated was quite different each time because yeah. of, of the, the the cultural references that come along the way that a word is understood or not. So I think there's a whole kind of interesting uh, aspect um, in, 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 the, in the kind of create, creation of these visual uh, images, uh, which also questions what our roles as architects with our background and with our education can, can bring to this. Yeah, well said. It's, um, it is fascinating. I mean, I've used mid-journey myself and, um, I think where I see like there's a few business cases. So on the architecture, social online images, they can be copyrighted. You know, if you're generating something, there is no copyright with it. So there's like this creative area yes. of it, but like equally, like you said, you can be in like generate a building in the style of name architecture, you know, with V-Ray looking yeah. high res 4k and it will do the best of its ability to do that. But equally, as you say, based on the prompts, based on the order, based on all these keywords and how to enter it, you get totally different stuff. Yes. Um, but the other thing I think is really important to mention with chat GPT, which has come out now, I mean, I was using AI last year, last year before chat GPT took off and um, it's been around for a while. And I think one of the important bits to mention is so this, this machine has sucked up all this language, which goes up to 2021, but it's not 2022 or 2023. So we have to be careful on what people understand this, this thing can be used. It's got, not going to know anything that's happened in the last two years, but actually, like you say, it's really savvy on even like earlier when we were talking about the history of architecture, you can get some weird and wacky results mixing in name architecture slash Heatherwick in a, uh, you know, neoclassical style, and it will generate something which I find um, is really inspirational. What I was going to quickly ask you before, I don't, I don't want to deviate, deviate away too much to the questions, but where I could see it potentially doing really well it's like that startup part of, you know, in the design process in your office, yeah. you're on the front end stages, you just want to get a feel for it. Yes, yeah. I reckon it, it could be a really cool tool to spitball yeah. kind of looks and feelings. But, you know, further along, as you've done, you've got all these amazing buildings here that you've done over time throughout your career and stuff. You know, a, a, a mid-journey image is going to give you that sense of feel, but that's far and away very different to building a building like you've done now right i mean do, do you do you agree with that would you, I, you experiment with it in the front end of designing yes so first of all to answer yes for the moment we are very much experimenting experimenting it uh, in on the front end we we take uh, if we we need to express an idea for a project for a, a competition it's we, we we do it even internally for ourselves to kind of see what it triggers and it, it for that it is a great tool you kind of suddenly say oh yeah i didn't imagine this yeah. it's almost you know, in, in a sense, it's maybe not so different to what we were doing before when we were collecting images on Pinterest and then just taking inspiration from these. Ah, to true. It. So it's just, of, of course, exponentially more uh, efficient and, and quick. However, I have to say it's today it produces images only. But I think it's a matter of time before we see it produce, translate these images into three dimensional uh, models or uh point clouds or whatever, you know, a three-dimensional form that can be worked with. Mm -hmm. And from that, then start being the basis of, of uh, the, 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 the project that you work with. So I, I think this this will happen very quickly. We we see it already happen in other industries, you know, in animation industries where they, from the image, they manage to make a, 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 an animated model out of it. So that, it's really a matter of time. So in a way, when I'm thinking and asking these questions, I'm already... Um, considering this, that it will actually, uh, this evolution will happen and we're very quickly going to move from image to, to an actual uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, expression of it. Then your question comes to who, who knows how to build this is, is, it, is, is, is a question uh, in itself. I mean, like, like an image is an image. It's not, it's, it's not the knowledge of translating that image into 
first of all documents that can that that can be built and and to actually build it of course yeah. it's be streamlined as well with 3 3d printing uh, and all the the, tech, the technological evolutions of the the built industry as well uh, but i think that's really um a very interesting questions as to you know what 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 the stages will be who will be conducting them but uh more than this i would say what, what i'm interested in is how uh when when you're presented with options because the tool is great to to kind of give you an, an array of options to to look into to to consider once you have these options how do you make the decision of uh of to pick that one above another mm. uh, I, I think, and, and that's obviously that's the mystery of the creative process. Process. It's very hard to to explain what that what that like why uh, why and how we make these decisions as as uh, as creative people in general and as architects in our case. And I think that, but that's the core of the question for me because it's um, uh, what uh, cr credentials or, or what experience will you have in the future or the future generations will have to make these decisions um to take something forward and leave something behind yeah yeah well well said well and we we have to see a little bit where it's going isn't it i'm i'm not too what i personally am not too worried that ai is ever going to replace the role of an architect because it's so there's so much variables there's so much knowledge and experience yeah. that being said though you know, it could, it, it, it's interesting seeing where, you know, maybe AI can take away from those mundane tasks. It's quite interesting, yes. like you mentioned, maybe Pinterest should be worried because all those mood boards are going to go because maybe we'll get them on mid journey. But hey, that's um, Pinterest. Well, it, pr it, 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 actually, there's some interesting developing developments happening around that as well. Is that the, in a sense, today, mid journey takes, or all the, these AI tools take the images from a bank of images that is out, out there. Uh, this is going, developing now towards the potential of you creating your own bank of images. Mm. So, uh, meaning that in the future, uh, it will, if we will, I, I will be using this, these tools, for example, it will only take it from images that I have pre-selected or our website, for example, or, or and images that are similar to that. So I will really be able to guide the AI into creating something that is, has the identity of name architecture. Yeah, well said. Well, I tell you what, we've still been getting lovely messages coming in. Yoga says hello to me, but loves your images, Natalie. So, you know, you have another fan internationally there. They are they are good images. Um, Abishka uh, asks some really interesting questions, maybe partly I can get involved in as well as yourself, because talks about the architecture profession, but also looking for a job as well. Bishka says, uh, hi, Natalie, like you mentioned, clients could also get sure far into the meeting process using Midjourney. Does the knowledge uh, of Midjourney make architects more sought after from a client's perspective, as well as from a job application mm -hmm. perspective as well? So I'm happy to share my thoughts on the job perspective um, aspect. However, Natalie, what do you think about it from the client's perspective, these tools like Midjourney? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm sure they will, and they are already in the same way that previously. You know, uh, some clients use SketchUp or similar types of, of uh, software to to design their own their house or their project before they came to see you and, and tell tell you this is what I want. So I am sure. Yes, and it's 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 so democratic in a sense that people will be testing it a lot. Um, I think it comes. This comes back also to the questions of what makes us particular as architects, I think, you know, we, we are uh, at present, at least uh, educated for five years in school. What do we do during those five years that makes our use of these tools different to just anyone uh, else using it in the context of, a, of developing a project and on a particular site? So um, I think that's to generate an image is something, but to generate it with an, a particular intention and, and, uh, the many constraints that we have to take into account uh, as uh, as architects is is a different process, yeah, different yeah. process of decision making along the way. Yeah, I agree with you, and 
I, we, we touched upon it briefly before we went live. In terms of the job application process, I haven't really seen it yet. I think like, um, yeah. you know, images on mid journey, whether they pop up in the CV, maybe as a student, that could be one thing. But where I see AI being amazingly useful is stuff like covering letters, okay, when you're still gonna get the core bits of what you want to say in, but actually, I think that some people really like covering letters. I'm not too sure they need it anymore. I, you know, covering letters used to be went before email when you would send your application in and you would put the letter on the front. And there's stuff like that. You could probably speed up the process by, you know, if you need a covering letter, okay, you can generate it with inputs and then you can concentrate on making that portfolio beautiful. Yes. But, you know, um, with, it goes a bit to like we're talking about in architecture as an architect. Basically, that feel of that document, that portfolio, it's kind of your DNA. It's like who you are. It's your je ne sais quoi. It's your taste mm -hmm. as an architect. And I don't think that you can use AI to do that part of the CV and portfolio because the portfolio is as you know, because you've got your own studio, Natalie, when you go in for an interview, it's the conversation with the person with the portfolio. And if it was a generated portfolio, I think you would start to feel that in the interview, but maybe using it for a covering letter is not really a big deal. It's okay, you know? Of course, we, we usually also just look very quickly at the covering letter and then, and then look yeah. at the portfolio first. And if the portfolio is interesting, we go back to the covering letter to see yeah. what is in there. But yeah. um, no, I, I totally agree. I, I think um, it's interesting what you're saying because I, I think actually, and, and we're seeing this happen already with, uh, with the advent of chat GPT as well in, in many uh, educational environments where they're, if, like suddenly taken over by the fact that all all these students are, are writing essays that are uh, uh, auto automated quickly with the AI, I think uh, it's there's an interesting question here of what will actually become valuable. So um, yes, you know, architecture students today can produce uh, ten renders for a jury in the, in about uh, just a day before the jury and come and put them up on the wall and and they might look good um, as an image. I think we will see an emphasis, a uh, growing emphasis on actually talking, des describing your work, talk, presenting yourself, describing your intentions, your your concepts, because that is the only thing you know <laughs> that for the moment the AI is not doing <laughs> is is uh, it cannot replace uh, replace you in. Uh, Physically, of course, you can deep fake your your interview and and so on. But let's uh, uh, let's not go into that. But I think there there's suddenly a, again a, a value to the actual um, uh, dis verbal description and and yeah. a verbal exchange of uh, that is going to we're going to see growing. Yeah, I I completely agree. So you maybe just to answer. Uh, sorry, oh, go no, ahead. I, I, maybe, Maybe just to answer your your question about the the interest of it in a, as a job application, I, I think definitely you know a, any tool is interesting for a uh, for for studios hiring, depending of course on the studio and what what they're doing. But for a studio who's interested in, to adopting uh, these tools, and I think honestly speaking, it's everyone is going to have to somehow uh, adapt to this because it will just be uh, otherwise you lose your lose your competitiveness. But I think any tool that you can bring along and knowledge that you can bring along that that can help the studio evolve is great. I mean, we, we have recent graduates in the student studio that use that teach me tools that I, I don't know and I didn't hear about. And that's great because that you know, that triggers new kind of potentials and ideas and, and, and it's, it's uh, very refreshing and interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. And the last bit, um, cause I know we've got one or two questions more. The last bit I want to add is the other thing is sometimes when you design in the CV and portfolio, okay, you can have a, one generic one, but let's say now I really want to work for name. Uh, I might do a bit of research on name and, and choreograph that CV and portfolio two things that I think you would go, oh, that's interesting, you know, putting certain bits at the front, mm -hmm. making a certain emphasis on, on parts of my research or, or, or and kind of move the aesthetic slightly to something that would fit within names, ecosystem, and studio. And I don't think AI is there just yet to do it. Maybe one day it will. 
eventually I guess yeah. Actually, it's no, you, you, and you shouldn't. You shouldn't yet uh, t take everything that the AI tells you <laughs> as taken for granted. Because I, I, I was uh, testing Chat GPT on asking him if uh, if he knows name architecture <laughs> and what we designed, uh, and it was the, the the response was quite interesting because it, it obviously went to our website and and took <laughs> the general sentences as a, re a reply, but then also. Uh, described us as having designed projects that we have that are not ours. <laughs> it was quite interesting to know that we designed the Crillon Hotel in Paris. <laughs> Why not? But uh, <laughs> but it, uh, it's not. Uh, you, you can't take it yet for uh, for uh, granted because there are a lot of mistakes in it. Correct, exactly. Because I've got part of um, the architecture social. Not to deviate too far, but it fits exactly what you're saying. Is a directory, and I thought, well, cool. If Chat GPT is super accurate say now i want to talk about an architectural practice like bptw or name architecture great i can generate a bio and people can still go to wouldn't that be in interesting and exactly like you said it gave me for i tested it with bptw and the dates were wrong and i wasn't sure if a building was there but it, uh, equally it was quite convincing so i was like oh it's um if i didn't do that due diligence and took it as is yeah. i would have posted that on the arctic social and it would have been wrong and that's where we're not there just yet um no. so but um on, on, on the last it. side note oh uh, yeah which well did you, did you know like uh, microsoft owned chat gpt and they are it, it's Bing is a search engine which not many people use. Google has the lion's share, but it could be interesting that this AI technology might dethrone. I'm not sure it will, but where I'm saying is it's the only thing so far that will give Google a run for its money. And I do think, though, with more basic architecture, and I, I want to use that word lightly, but I'm maybe simpler tasks i can see where ai would have a better stab at it but when you're doing amazing work like this project that yeah i know you're proud of and is on um instagram i don't think ai is going to generate this but maybe briefly while you're here can you just tell me a little bit about this cool project because i know yeah, so it's recent this was yeah. actually a a, resident, a residential project on a very tight and constrained site that we designed. So I have to say, it's this was not generated with the artificial intelligence as such, but it was used very much uh, with parametric tools and some of them kind of directed to to somehow uh, use some of uh, art, artificial intelligence uh, tools to kind of make judgments, I would say, to to uh, discard uh, options and, and put forward other options in the design process. I think what was very interesting here is that it, it is actually, um, as you can see, a simple module that is uh, twisted along a vertical axis as it as it grows uh, vertically. And uh, the, the, in, the interesting, why we like working like this is, first of all, uh, we, we like to set out a very strong conceptual um, thinking behind the project at the outset. I, From experience, and first of all, that's the way I, I like to think and develop projects. And also from experience, while you work with the clients and develop the project, a strong concept enables you to keep the essence of the project alive despite the many changes that will occur in, in during this design. Um, here, what we during the design process, we actually had to accommodate various change, regulations that were either changing or that were given to us at a later stage of design um, mm. in terms of uh, very technical issues of, of, uh, of water ingress and loads and, 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 and so on. And the, the fact of, that we had this this uh, parametric model built and uh, and the variable set enabled us to reconfigure um, the, the the design while taking into account these par parameters without completely over having to <laughs> to start from a, a blank page again. So, I think that that's uh, that's where as a practice we we like adopting these uh, new technologies and techniques because. It is a it is a tool that can um, definitely enhance the the creative work and al but also really um, keep the original uh, uh, concept and idea uh, progressing and and alive. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool. So I'm a bit biased when you sent it through. I was like, oh, that is a nice, that is a beautiful <laughs> building. But really interesting to hear your process behind that and how it gets involved. 
Now, I've got one or two wind-down questions, if you fancy it, the last one, before you get to ask me any questions. Because we talked a bit about space planning, we talked a bit about aesthetics of AI, mm. but um, we talk, and also we were talking about CVs and portfolios. But in terms of academia, architecture education, or you as an employer educating an architectural assistant, a young architectural apprentice, how do you, how do you think architecture is going to be teached in the future or how are these tools are going to be used and stuff have you got any thoughts on that yes a lot no no uh, a lot of thoughts not necessarily <laughs> clear answers but a lot of questions and 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 uh, directions of thought i think first of all i, I have to say i think uh it, teaching uh softwares as a for lack of a better word or tick or or uh, um uh, tools in architecture is always a, a question uh, because you and it's balanced to find between uh, how much that takes over and how much that influences the the output or, or or how much you have to learn without it and it's an it's it's an, a very old question right I mean we uh, you remember the advent of CAD you know the, the 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 discussions that are still going on whether if in first years of architecture you, sh you should use CAD or only pencil drawings or mm -hmm. or line or or com use computer at, at all and it's it seems like an old-fashioned questions, but some schools actually still uh, still ask or still still have a particular reg rules around this. Uh, then there was all the, the 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 big overhaul of parametric tools, of course, and then uh, lately uh, BIM tools in 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 the in in architecture. And do you teach uh, BIM at, at school or not? Like, what's the value of uh, teaching? And, and it, it's a real question that you come out of school and you don't. It's it's a very rigid type of program, so it. You can you could say it kills the creativity at the, the level of students, uh, so you don't really teach them. But uh, once they come out to the professional world, you actually as a professional employer, you want them to use it. So where where do you strike the balance? So I think this question ha is an ongoing question in, in the profession. I think also that architecture as a profession is a profession that changes slowly. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, even if you look at the advent of BIM. Um, not all uh, offices use it. It's, it. It has cultural differences. I can I can see the differences between the UK and France, for example. Uh, it's very widespread in the UK today. It's still not as a common uh, or the commonly widespread in France, although it's obviously taking over. So, I think as a profession, it's always been, you know, dif difficult to to change the the architectural the process of designing buildings is a long process. It's it's not uh, it's, so everything. Uh, goes in hand with this. However, if, if we come back to this question of how do you teach architecture in the future, I think I ask myself, first of all, what, what is important to teach? Um, we could start with a question of why do we actually study for five years? What What is it that you do during these five years uh, that you cannot do uh, in, 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 uh, in a much shorter time? Yeah. And I think the crucial thing here is that we, we uh, develop critical thinking because we're um, exposed to the making of architecture over this time. And this is our, our main tool. My, my experience as a tutor for over uh, 10 years made me really realize that what, what we learn and what we teach the students is how to look we, we teach them what, like how to look at things differently how what what are they seeing in it and 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 that's really uh, that has to remain crucial I think it's it's uh, this hands-on training is an essential part of our of, of our um, curriculum and, and of what we come out with after these five years now I think the, the question here is uh, is how much do you learn and what do you learn through making through through actually uh, uh, designing <laughs> Uh, buildings, yeah. proposals, uh, developing concepts, and um, and and with these new tools coming up, is is like what 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 is the, the, the how much will the the creative process be affected by them? I mean, how? Uh, of course, you could already this happened in the past already. I when I was a student, I spent a lot of time hours drawing a perspective draw two point perspective drawing on my big drawing board, <laughs> and uh, you know it it was actually a very nice moment of, with the playing beautiful music and 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 suddenly seeing this kind of a the, the, the three dimensional uh, drawing of the space emerge on 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 the paper, um, and and you would do one <laughs> because it would take you yeah. days to do obviously today, and then when I as a teacher, obviously, and and uh, and all the three dimension three D uh, software is coming along. This the 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 
the, the perspective or the three-dimensional views were something that it, it was very quick to generate. And actually, yeah. you, you could see that, the, that this generation was designing through a three-dimensional view and not through two dimensions, for example. So I think this this question of, of how the, the tools are affect our, our, uh, our, our knowledge, our teaching, um, our training are, are crucial. My question with the these uh, artificial intelligent tools today are whether is there a paradigm shift because of the speed of, of production of the quantity of images that you can produce of the um, of the quantity of options that are put forward um, and it, it's a question like do do, do do is it the same to, to you know to look at two three good renders or to have uh, sixty of them <laughs> because it's just so easy to generate what what does what does it mean for your uh for this creative process um and uh, i i think those those are the questions that we should ask ourselves as uh as as teachers and uh, the, uh, as, as people who 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 pass this knowledge on to the next generation i guess uh, and uh, another question there is is what gives you these the tools to make a judgment yeah you know, how, how uh, when i see a plan um what is the difference about between me, uh, with my experience looking at a, at a, a plan and judging it, and uh, my uh, nine-year-old da daughter looking at it and saying, "Yes, I like it. I like the stairs there, or I don't," you know, yeah. to, to put it very simply. But um, I think that those are the questions that go into the, the, the education, and, and which we will have to ask ourselves as a as a profession. Um, mm. How do we how do we use those productively to um, to for the, the 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 needs that the society will will uh, require in the future as you said of course it also means that we we have because a lot of a, a lot of the um the things we do will be automated it gives us also a lot of time to do other things <laughs> so yes. you know if if i if i have a uh, the AI gives me options of a, of layouts to choose from, which would have taken me a week to come up with. What what did I use that week to do? Could I study more uh, uh, on Correct. sustainable uh, uh, new uh, um, topics that have come up, or new uh, new uh, uh, knowledge acquiring on, on all, all sorts of different um, uh, things that an architect needs to know and master? So I think that that's uh, very important important questions that we could ask there's also the human relation uh aspect you know uh what the ai won't replace is the relationship you have with a client uh, how right. do you understand brief how do you uh trans how do you read between the lines of what a client is, is telling you how do you uh, accommodate that with the realities of of uh of a site of regulations how do you transcribe that all, all the, the kind of human aspect of of uh, of the profession which will become very important and do we need to you know is that something that we need to put emphasis on 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 teaching yeah I, it's it's very i think it's very interesting what you say and to touch upon that as a business owner um there's a lot of things as and, and as architects if you if you have a practice you are a business owner as well as a designer and there's a lot of mundane stuff that we all do that this ai can really help with like uh, you know, everything online is websites, SEO is a pain in the ass. However, if you can get these scripts to help you out, it's really useful. Mundane stuff, it's amazing. And you laugh, but I thought it's very fitting for this. So the, the, thumbnail, the, the, the thumbnail I've made, which is your beautiful images, but the description in the schedule is all AI. And I looked at it, I put it in, and I was like, it's fine. And you just say, <laughs> put it in this tone. And I was like, Okay, that one, I'm not too sure. The second one, I was like, great, that works. And um, it was just one less thing. I had to think about less because actually I'm more concerned about us and our conversation in the moment, unscripted, that's real. But the, the description, I'm not too worried about, you know? So it's um, so even me, I'm challenging my processes. Yeah. What I was going to say now, maybe we can flip the script and you can ask me any questions, but also it's probably last chance saloon if anyone in the audience wants to ask Natalie a question before you go back to making these beautiful buildings. But while, if things come in, then I'll bring them on. But is there any questions you want to throw back to me before we round up? 
<laughs> I think, yes, I think there, there are a number of questions here. So I think it would be interesting to hear from the audience of what their uh, what their thoughts are on some of the topics that we've uh, we've uh, addressed. I think, especially, I'm very interested to hear about what the younger generations um, are are uh, are thinking and how do they see that uh, as a threat or not at all, and as a, just as a tool, and how they're how they're using that. Um, and also what kind of ideas are they coming up with in terms of what, uh, how they will direct their professional lives with these, these new tools, you know, do, do, do we, we, we talked about it briefly before we started the, the live stream. I think that you know, the, the advent of the architect as a render, uh, render, renderer or CGI producer, you know, that, that was a profession that is kind of stems from a new technology that, it, that, that came up that. Uh, that uh, that didn't exist before. So, what are these new kind of uh, offshoots in of architectural uh, um, uh, profession of the architectural architectural profession that will that will emerge? Yeah. And this how how we, how will, will our jobs evolve? I think that's a very interesting and exciting topic. I, I don't know what your thoughts are about this, Ian, as you see a lot of. Uh, people in on the job in the job market. What type of jobs are they looking for? Is it something that uh, that is starting to emerge as a as a sector in the in the profession? Oh, good question there. I tell you what. I'm, while I was I was listening, I was clicking away because this is the exhibition that I went to, yeah. Hamza Sheikh, and so it's blueprints for a dream, the new age of visual architecture, and this got to the Guardian, right? So people are talking about it. You know how hard it is as a business owner of things to get online and, and I think that um, it was quite interesting seeing this in person but I think you're right it, there's this experimental part of it which is actually amazing it's interesting it's on topic it's on trend but like you say just whacking out stuff in mid journey for the sake of it probably isn't that interesting I mean I paid for the subscription you generate a few things and then you think oh you know where does it go from there? So it's like it goes back to the purpose. Where you're a designer, and I think that the the some really successful architecture students that I'm seeing or interesting projects are kind of using that tool to to kind of blur the edges. Or like you say, which I loved and what you said earlier, it's just using these tools to do the mundane stuff to further your thought process to get you know to 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 learn quicker like you said i mean there's something nice about the discipline that you did years ago with that perspective having said that to generate it quicker and to go further on your project is a different trade-off and i okay. think it's absolutely fine i can see we've had one or two thoughts come in as well so abadir says um i think ai will help aid our creative process and take over the profession i i agree with that um but also Abishka, who kindly wrote the question in earlier, has said she's not had a chance to learn AI as a software in university, but definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to playing around with it in the profession, if I get mm -hmm. a chance. So it feels all quite optimistic, doesn't it, yeah, so far? I think so, yeah. I, I, I Also, just to tell, I, I don't think it's... Uh, it's not necessarily something that you have to learn as uh, as such, but it's mm -hmm. actually it brings on an interesting question as to... Uh, will. You know, will that become a course in an architectural oh, wow. curriculum of uh, learning how to use these tools? Um, but and there are actually yet yeah, workshops out there today, uh, and and some that are that we're participating as uh, members of our office are taking as well to kind of learn how to because it is a tool that you have to learn how to use. You can play around with it, or you can learn to use it to to create what you're actually trying to to direct or improve on it. Um, I I think though that it's a uh, uh, def it's it's definitely positive. It it opens up so much kind of creative uh, po potentials and 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 possibilities. Um, it's 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 a great tool to express atmospheres of of, a, of an idea uh, to to present something uh, as as reference images as well. So uh, so I I definitely see all all kind of positives in that happening i think um i i am very still really fascinated about the the importance of the prompt in there because i, I think you know that our our profession for the moment which is which was very visually visual based um actually has to now stand the test of words <laughs> again mm -hmm. and and that's maybe something that is uh uh 
will be very interesting to see how it that is observed culturally as well you know does it because and, and how what i was going to say with that is how do we um contribute to this process happening you know m most of the words that mid journey is taken is are, are are let's say in english today so whatever you, if you don't speak english well and you don't use those same words oh, very you good point result um ah, wow so well, then obviously the tools translate the words but is the translation the correct translation that you wanted to give a, as a as a kind of connotations to that word or not so and I, I think as architects, we could also ask, you know, how do we participate in this in, in this process? How how do we ensure that these tools are not biased into as to what they they're they're, they're showing? Uh, how do we direct it? How how do we, as I mentioned before, how do we start creating our artificial intelligence database of where the, the the machine is looking for the information to generate something? How do we teach it to learn what we wanted to what we wanted to learn for your personal practice? Uh, or, you know, for a larger group of people. But I think th those are very interesting questions of, uh, of where the profession might be also going and how we, how we should uh, step in and, and, and have our word. Well said. Well, I think, well, as you say, it will be interesting to see where it goes. And the last little thought from Robert Dick that comes in is um, he's excited about how it bridges free and creative um, from the mundane and typical boring projects. Uh, well, there you go. Well, uh, each to their own. But I think it's super exciting space as well. I also think that what you do uh, in your practice is exciting and is amazing as well. So on that note, just before we end the live stream, and I'm going to put a little clap down because it's been a really interesting one. I'm going to bring up your website once again. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you if they want to, if they watch the replay or they get excited, they want to reach out, how do they find you? So we're uh, we're on Instagram, on LinkedIn, of course. Um, uh, the website, and you can register to our newsletter, which is the best way to keep updated with, uh, mm. with the news and the practice and our, and our, our, uh, our studio's work. So uh, all these uh, social medias, we, we talk also, uh, I participate to quite a lot of uh, talks and, and, uh, and conferences. So it's always great to, to reach out to us on, on those to, to, uh, to come and ask interesting questions. So uh, we also, uh, what we are developing in, in, in the practice is what we call name talks. So uh, every few weeks or months, we kind of organize these uh, talks that for the moment are quite internal uh, to the practice, but we have the ambition of opening them up and people to come and kind of exchange ideas on, on topics such as this one. So um, we're, we're really excited to kind of open these, uh, these, these uh, discussions up and, and bring something to the, to the, to the profession, uh, which is not necessarily the, the, the actual additional technical knowledge or testing the tool but the larger questions that come that that uh, uh, come around this the these topics and how we can uh, not just do but also uh, think <laughs> while we're doing and to what direction we want to want to take this brilliant well I really appreciate you making the time because I know you've got all these kick-ass projects on at the moment so thank you once again for making the time to be here and on that note i'm probably going to shut down the live stream at this at this time so thank you for making the time as well to join us during your lunch break if you did if you didn't manage to come in live and you've seen the replay though do reach out to natalie at name architecture and we've got some cool lava live streams coming up next week as well i'll schedule those soon maybe we'll get natalie back because like you said this space is moving so fast um, exactly. It will be interest. It will be interesting to see how long this stays relevant for, and maybe it'll be a piece of time in this in between zone. Who knows? I think we should definitely catch up in another six months and see what we've learned since. So, it will. It might be a totally different episode, isn't that, Matt? Okay. Thank you so much, Natalie. I'm going to end the live stream here, and thank you to the audience. Okay. Natalie, stay on the stage while I shut it down. And guys, thank you so much. Good luck getting to the end of your day. Don't worry, it's Thursday. You're almost there. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.